Welcome back to Jersey Matters. After a couple of months of legislative wrangling in Trenton, legalized recreational marijuana is now the law of the land in New Jersey, but it comes with some real problems, especially for New Jersey employers. Here is top employment attorney Michael Riccobono from the firm of Ogletree Deacons to explain. Thanks so much for your time, sir. I know that the state, politicians, businesses, all of us are trying to navigate through the new recreational marijuana law. Let's talk specifically about businesses. How, how do they set parameters? What, what, what rules and laws can they make within their own business, even if they're contrary to the state law? Sure. Well, it's it, the, the new marijuana law in New Jersey, it represents a radical change in New Jersey employment law. The good news for employers is that nothing in this new law um, prohibits them from still um, prohibiting employees from using marijuana on the work site or during work hours. Uh, employers can still prohibit employees from possessing marijuana on the work site or during work hours. Um, and it also can, employers can still prohibit employees from being under the influence um, at the work site or during work hours. Um, the change in the law actually provides, some em provides employees with some employment protections. Most notably, what the law does is it prohibits employers from uh, terminating or taking any adverse employment action against an employee or an applicant solely because they fail a drug test for marijuana. So no longer can the results of a drug test, uh, a failed drug test for marijuana, serve as the sole basis for an employer to take an adverse employment action against an employee. Aren't the two things you just said in conflict that they do have, they do, you, you can prevent a, an employee or, or have rules against an employee showing up high. And at the same time, if you test them and they are high, you can't let them go. It, it does present some conflict. Um, the law really looks at um, what is going on at the workplace, right? So it actually regulates off-duty or off-conduct um, uh, actions, such as, you know, taking marijuana, right? So on the work site or during work hours, employers can still prohibit the use, possession, and being under the influence of marijuana. But simply a failed drug test for marijuana can no longer serve as the basis for um, an adverse employment action. There are other circumstances, for example, the employee uh, violated policies or um, did something, did some other, engage in some other conduct that is prohibited under the law. The employer would need to point to that in addition to the failed drug test in order to take that adverse action against the employee in that situation. So if someone is high at work, or gets high at work on their lunch break and comes back, but they're highly functional, there's nothing you can do. If they're under the influence during the work during work hours or at the work site, the law says you can still take adverse action against them. You can't let them go. You can let them. You can terminate okay. their employment. Well, how yeah. are you going to prove that they were high? By taking and, the drug test, right? And, and that's one of the difficulties with the current state of marijuana testing is that there is no uh, medically acceptab acceptable test right now, which shows is, the, is, an, is an individual currently under the influence of marijuana, like we do with alcohol. So what employers are going to need to do is they're going to need to rely on objective um, evidence and, and contemporaneous um, observations of the employee. Another thing about this new law is that it requires employers to use a what the law refers to as a workplace impairment recognition expert. And these are folks that are supposed to be trained in determining and evaluating whether an individual is under the influence of marijuana. So uh, going forward, anytime an employer wants to drug test for marijuana, they're all, they will also need to do this physical examination that is conducted by one of these so-called um, wire experts, these workplace impairment recognition um, experts. It seems like everyone I talked to about this law, and I know they had trouble with it, and they, there was, it was legislative wrestling till the end, and even the governor wasn't happy with it when he signed it. It seems like there's so, many, so much conflict, especially for law enforcement and for uh, employers, that they need to go back to the drawing board and, and fix some of this with legislation. Would you agree with that when it comes to businesses? 
I would, particularly with respect to the employment protections uh, and, and uh, parts of the bill, parts of the law that affect um, employees at the workplace. The, the good news, I think, for employers and employees alike is that the law does require the Cannabis Regulatory Commission to promulgate rules and regulations um, that are going to be that are going to implement um, some of these employment related protections in the law. And the, the law says that those rules and regulations are supposed to be promulgated within the next 180 days or so. So we're looking forward, employers are looking forward to those rules and regulations, which will ho hopefully provide some clarity on the, um, the anti-discrimination aspects of the law, as well as the drug testing aspects of the law and how those are supposed to um, work in practice and whether there's any type of um, safety sensitive exceptions to the law for employees that are, um, whose job duties require them to for example, operate a forklift or heavy machinery, and, and what kind of exceptions might an employer be able to rely upon um, for those employees that are either public facing or again, involved in a um, safety sensitive position. So we're hopeful within the next six months or so, um, employers will, will get some, some clarity on exactly how the law is to be applied in practice. Well, when they tighten this up or they give you some clarity, let's talk again. Thanks so much for your time. Sounds good, Larry. Thanks for having me. Attorney Michael Riccobono from Ogletree Deacons. Still to come on Jersey Matters. Most of us, if not all of us, have been for a COVID test. So what's the process like? We'll take you on a tour next.